With lead, you can protect yourself from radiation. I think we all know this diagram. It's great because it shows that particle radiation can be completely shielded, while electromagnetic radiation can only be attenuated. This is because our well-known alpha and beta radiation consists of charged particles, and through a series of successive collisions in the material, they gradually lose energy with each impact. Since gamma and X radiation have no charge, their interaction with matter is relatively weak. In most cases, they lose their energy in just a single absorption process. Or not at all if the process doesn't occur. With increasing layer thickness at a constant density, the chances of such an absorption process occurring increases. That means we have an exponential decay for the unscattered photons. There is a characteristic value for this, the half value layer. And we will determine that first before we delve deeper into this very complex topic. In this experiment, Lead plates of varying thickness are used. This means we will determine the half value layer for lead and we'll need a gamma emitter. Season 137. So we'll be determining the half value layer for 661 kilo electron volt photons in lead. For our experiment, please use this specific cesium sample with this particular aluminium plate. We have another sample, but, but this is unsuitable. The aluminium plate is there to completely shield the beta particles from the cesium, so that our sample is effectively a pure gamma emitter, so that you can use different lead thickness. You'll need to measure for 5 minutes, otherwise the counting statistics Regarding the lead thickness, you can get creative. Initially, I used only one plate, but you can also combine different plates to generate more data for other thicknesses. We've left space for two extra slots for this exact purpose. And now let's go to the fun part. These are my raw data. Of course, you should subtract the background, though it won't make a big difference. And here I've plotted the counting or pulse rate against the thickness of lead in gram per square centimeter. Clearly an exponential fit passes through. From the exponent, we can determine the so-called absorption or attenuation coefficient. We'll keep that in mind for later. I also manually took the natural logarithmic of the counting rates and plotted them against the thickness. This gives us a linear function with the slope representing the absorption or attenuation coefficient, 0 0.077 reciprocal centimeters. If you divide the logarithm of 2 by that, you get the half value area density, small d one half, with the unit gram per centimeter squared. In our case, it's 9.002 grams per square centimeter. Our calculation isn't over yet. We want the half value thickness. To get that, divide by the density of the material. In our case, it's lead, which is 11.342 grams per cubic centimeter. In the end, you get a half value thickness of 0.794 centimeters. Just accept it for now. The half value thickness is also referred to as half value layer thickness. It's the same thing. Some people, like me, are just lazy with speaking and writing. Anyway, the unit is centimeter. All other values are practically useless. In radiation protection, you look at the half value layer thickness and not the attenuation coefficient. You can look up the half value layer thickness in the book Fundamentals of Practical Radiation Protection by Vogt and Schulz. And for our students, I've included the literature reference in the video description. Just use that so that the 12 people in our practical course don't have to fight for this one copy that we have. And as we see, 0.6 mega electron volts for LEDs, we arrive at 0.6 centimeters. Hmm, a discrepancy. How can that be? Well, in the literature, the half value layer thickness is for narrow beam geometry. We don't have a narrow beam geometry. We have a point source in the third slot. So the gamma rays hit the LED layer with a broad spread. And scattering effects can occur. In practical radiation protection, an addition dose caused by scattered radiation is taken into account with a dose increase factor B. Although we are not measuring dose, only gammas, they can still be scattered. Since we have a lot of space between the detector and the sample, there's plenty of room for scattering, which causes more radiation to reach the detector from the outside as calculated from the layer thickness. That's why we get more counts and this calculation tells us, aha, there is still a lot of radiation coming through, 
So the half value layer thickness should be higher than what the literature says. That also covers our error discussion. And please don't look up this topic in the Karl Heinrich Lieser book. There's a lot of confusing stuff and many terms are used incorrectly or synonymously, but with wrong units and <laughs> it costs me nerve to present this as organized as I tried in this video. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.